welcome let's see the life story of malala uh, her uh, autobiography memoir is entitled uh, i am malala and uh, the first chapter from this memoir is a daughter is born uh, malala was born on uh, 12th july 1997 in uh, swatpali mengora uh, pakistan she is a pakistani activist at the age of uh, 12 she has been doing blogging for uh, bbc uh, urdu uh, under a pseudonym and highlighting the uh, challenges under the taliban rule uh, she was victimized for that at the age of 12 in 2009 uh, while coming from school in her hometown she was uh, shot in the head by a taliban uh, man a terrorist or activist and uh, this uh, but she didn't stop uh, after her recovery uh, she she strongly and courageously emphasized the need for girls female education and uh, she she gained international recognition for her enthusiastic fearless courageous voice for female education and uh, she was uh, awarded uh, many prestigious uh, uh, awards she was awarded with many prestigious uh, awards and uh, uh, in 2014 she was given the highest uh, uh, laureate nobel laureate peace prize uh, for her service and uh, she is uh, very proud that she is the youngest recipient of this nobel award and in this uh, this is written her autobiographical memoir is written in collaboration with the uh, prize winning british journalist uh, katherine sorry uh, christina lamp and uh, in, in the book is published in the year 2013 and the first chapter of the book is entitled uh, a daughter is born which we are going to see here in this first chapter she talks about three things mainly uh, first about her place uh, swat valley very beautiful description uh, it's like a paradise on earth uh, with full of uh, flower gardens uh, hills mountains and orchards fruit uh, trees uh, so a very beautiful picture of that is given and she also gives us the history of the rulers uh, very short history precisely she talks about the rulers of the uh, mingora and also uh, the very uh, important thing is she talks about the gender discrimination that existed in her society uh, she belongs to yusuf zai tribal community why were you s a f is an a i is a is a say and her father is ziauddin is a fan uh, is a say of course father is a very very important key figure in making malala what she is now in a society where importance is not given to the female girls the female children uh, he is always supporting her like anything from her birth till now so what she is now it's only because of her father and um, her father is yavudan mother is uh, uh, tor uh, tor pekai p e k h a i uh, of course uh, she starts with her uh, uh, birth birth of a female child in a society where uh, female children or not uh, the birth of a female child is not celebrated only boy if a boy is born they will celebrate it and uh, here her mother was did not receive any um, greeting from anybody uh, 
when malala was born uh, no celebration at all and what happened they even expressed sympathy for uh, having uh, given birth to a female child uh, but what happens uh, here she says that father uh, he he when a son is born they used to celebrate with by giving a uh, fire fired in celebration of a son is yes, the rifles are uh, shot and fired in celebration of a son whereas uh, girl babies are hidden away behind a uh, curtain and her um, sole purpose in life is only to prepare food and give birth to children so this is what happened in that society and uh, for uh, for most of the pastuns pastun tribe um, uh, the it was a gloomy day when a daughter is born that is what they did my father's cousin he visited of course uh, father's cousin is uh, jagan sher uh, khan um, he he drew the family tree and gave it to ziauddin malala's father uh, which ended with his name and malala as father took that uh, sheet and uh, after his name he wrote malala as his hair that's the great thing very first thing not only this uh, when the when she was born uh, he made his uh, neighbors throw chocolates fruits and sweets and coins into her cradle which is done only for uh, male children male babies but he made it usually done only for boys and uh, her father made uh, the neighbors do it for malala so this shows uh, the father's uh, love for equality uh, he started uh, in his family first and that is the great thing about his about her father and uh, he named her even the name that he has given the daughter is very striking he has given the name of malala of my want and afka the greatest heroine of afghanistan she has fought in the 1880 british war that is the second afco uh, um, anglo uh, afghan war afghanistan yes and um, when many uh, people died she, she uh, helped Uh, the soldiers by giving uh, words of faith and hope and uh, she also fought she was of course the daughter Ma- malalai was a daughter of a shepherd in maiwand a small town and uh, when there was the fight against the british uh, this girl went with other women to the battlefield you know, from her village and uh, to tend the wounded uh, soldiers and t- give them water so she did a very great thing uh, she saw that their men were losing uh, faith and when the flag bearer fell she lifted her, her white veil up and high and marched into the battle field in front of the troops this is the uh, great uh, bravery and courage of malalai and this girl was uh, named after that uh, greatest heroine of the afghanistan war and this uh, malalai uh, was killed uh, uh, and this girl actually the malalai was killed under fire uh, but her words and bravery inspired the men to turn the battle around so they destroyed the entire brigade one of the best uh, defeats in the history of the british army the afghans were very proud um, that the last afghan king uh, built a maiwand uh, victory monument in the center of kabul so such a great uh, person just like um, uh, joan of arc uh, of the french army uh, she was responsible for the winning of pastuns in the afghans uh, in the a uh, war against the british second afro uh, uh, anglo af afghan war she is responsible for the victory and uh, but uh, very sad the fa- grandfather uh, mother's father didn't like the name because her name is a very sad name because it is grief stricken but father didn't bother about all that he wanted um, he always used to quote the famous uh, 
uh, poet uh, Rahmat Shah Sahil uh, of Peshawar. The last word ends. The last verse ends. O oh, Malalai of my want, rise once more to make pastans understand the so the song of honor. Your poetic words turn worlds around. I beg you, rise again. So the father used to quote this, and he used to tell the story of Malalai to everybody who came to the house. And he has named uh, his daughter after that uh, Malalai of my want, uh, calling my. And uh, so here she says, so my name was. Uh, Uh, well known to all the people in my place and uh, it was it is uh, my name floated in the wind uh, she says very beautifully known to all the people floated in the wind and they lived in a most nest uh, she gives a description of swet valley it is the most beautiful place in the world she says the village is a heavenly kingdom of uh, on mountains gushing waterfalls and crystal clear lakes uh, um swet was called udayama that means garden it's like uh, uh, there are wild flowers orchards delicious orchards of delicious fruit emerald mines and uh, rivers full of uh, trout so people all often called it uh, the sujerland of the east swet valley is often called the sujerland of the east and even uh, they had pakistan's first sky resort in that place in swet valley the rich people uh, they used to come there to enjoy their holidays because of the clean air and scenery and um, uh, sufi festivals are also of uh, music and dancing uh, was held there very often and um, uh, many foreigners to visited and it is said that uh, queen of england came there queen elizabeth the first and uh, she uh, she stayed in the it is said that uh, sorry queen elizabeth the second and it is said that she lived in she stayed in the white palace that was built uh, uh, from the same marble uh, as the taj mahal by the king uh, the first wali of swet so uh, she says that uh, we have a special history also that is uh, uh, the swet is part of the province of uh, khyber pakhtunkhwa or uh, kpk as many pakistanis used to call it and this um, swet is uh, separated from the rest of the pakistan in what way it is separated it is a uh, princely state earlier and after independence it became part of the uh, pakistan but what happened uh, they stayed autonomous uh, pakistan interfered only in the Uh, foreign policy of swet valley otherwise they were very happy with their own uh, well administered justice and uh, they had their own uh, uh, own uh, laws and rulers and here uh, but uh, finally peace came to this place because the tribes were warring at all the time and collected issue that is uh, uh, a tax of 10% of income uh, with which they built uh, roads hospitals and schools uh, and uh, after independence uh, uh, this uh, swet valley is included with pakistan uh, that is the important thing that she tells us and then uh, this is only some 100 miles away from pakistan the capital of pakistan islamabad and uh, the journey took nearly 5 uh, hours by road Uh, she says and uh, uh, malla saida uh, who is known by the british as the uh, mad fakir uh, he battled the british uh, uh, forces among the craggy peaks and uh, um, he 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 it is supposed that uh, um, the the uh, preacher lived in that place and then uh, winston churchill also who wrote a book about uh, this uh, war between the mad fakir and uh, the british uh, he also uh, said to have visited swet valley and uh, one of the peaks is called after him uh, churchill's pickets uh, even though he was very not very comp- he and uh, naturally uh, churchill is not complimentary about uh, any of the um, colonies and uh, here colonized people uh, he was not complimentary about this people and uh, finally the pass is a 
green domed uh, uh, shrine where where people used to throw coins to show thanks to express their thanks for the safety arrival so it is there in the front in the entrance of those valley and then uh, she goes on to describe uh, her place where she lived mingora the biggest town in the valley and here she says that uh, many people moved from surrounding villages and the tradition they were making um, uh, they were doing uh, that, that is uh, it has hotels colleges golf uh, course and a famous bazaar for buying our tradi- their traditional embroidery uh, gemstones and anything that you can it's a big town that is what she wants to uh, convey and um, another important thing about the swatwali is they have uh, a place called uh, like uh, gulkada which means uh, a place of us and later it they started calling it as bulkara and uh, this is the place of the buddhist statues uh, that is near our near uh, malala's home uh, there was a field that was scattered with the uh, mysterious um, uh, sta- ruins of statues of lions on their haunches uh, broken columns headless figures an oddest of all hundreds of stone umbrellas everything was there spread out there and uh, that is close by to her uh, home and uh, that is a, a reminiscent of uh, uh, buddhism uh, buddhism uh, came in the year in the 6th century she says in a later in a, uh, in some place it came to uh, her place in the 2nd century Uh, second century and their kings ruled for nearly 500 years buddhist kings ruled swet valley for 500 years and after them uh, islam came there in the 11th century when sultan uh, mahmud of ghazni uh, invaded from afghanistan and became their ruler uh, ghazni g h a z n i ghazni uh, he ruled over that is buddhist uh, kings ruled for 500 years and uh, that is from second century and uh, islam came in 11th century and chinese uh, explorers they have uh, explored the place they have written stories of the 1400 buddhist monasteries um, uh, along the banks of the rio river swat so there were nearly 1400 monasteries at those uh, um, that is in those centuries and the magical uh, sounds of uh, uh, temple bells uh, heard along the valley so the temples are all uh, gone now but in anywhere wherever you go you can see the uh, statue of uh, buddha uh, sitting cross legged on a lotus flower it's seen quite often uh, in many places Uh, they can see the carvings of a smiling buddha so there are many stories that buddha himself came to the place because swatwali was such a uh, peaceful place and some of his uh, ashes that is buddha's ashes were also said to be buried in a in the valley in a giant stupa and uh, uh, this uh, bukkara is a magical place to hide and seek for children they used to play because to many uh, ruined statues and uh, uh, other things that they start they used to play hide and seek there and uh, once uh, even archaeologists have come there to do research uh, about the place and it is also a place of pilgrimage so such a, a great uh, place uh, swat valley with full of uh, uh, beautiful temples uh, where buddhist kings uh, lay buried and uh, very beautifully uh, she quotes her father's poem uh, zayaudin's poem uh, he wrote a poem entitled the relics of a uh, budkara uh, which he sung uh, beautifully uh, sums up by saying that uh, how temple and mosque could exist side by side uh, poem uh, two lined poem goes like this uh, when the voice of truth rises from the minarets the buddha smiles and the broken chain of history reconnects so very beautifully uh, he brings in the coexistence of temple and 
the mosque uh, without any uh, disturbance for the people without any turmoil and they lived uh, uh, near the hindu kush uh, mountains and here she says uh, we can see uh, all the beautiful uh, uh, scenery outside everything children used to play cricket the boys especially and uh, here she brings in the gender discrimination father used to sit in the front veranda and many men used to came there they used to sit and talk about politics and about the ruling of the administration of the village of the place and uh, any problem uh, for the tribal people everything was discussed by the male members of the society whereas mother used to sit at the back uh, with other women are uh, talking about uh, cooking and uh, other things related to the home home and um, they used to have plenty of uh, fruit trees uh, fruits of uh, sweetest figs uh, pomegranates peaches and even in their own garden they had uh, grapes guavas persimmons and uh, she says in the front yard they had uh, this uh, famous uh, uh, delicious uh, uh, a plum tree uh, mother used to feed even the birds with plums very beautifully she narrates this and uh, at the back of the house the veranda the women gathered and uh, uh, they used to write uh, two lined poems like uh, they call it tapi t a p e y two lined poems and they used to mother used to sing the tapi song that is uh, don't kill doves in the garden uh, you kill one and others won't come this is the mother's uh, tapi song and then um, malala used to sit on the roof uh, top and uh, watch the mountains and dream uh, the highest mountains uh, uh, is uh, uh, in that place is the pyramid shaped mount elam e l u m mount elam and uh, uh, she says that it is uh, considered to be a very sacred uh, mountain and uh, it it is full of it, it looks as if it has a necklace of fleecy clouds and uh, um, in 3000 uh, sorry 327 bc when the before the buddhists came uh, they heard the history says the history of swet valley says that alexander the great he came here um, uh, and uh, with thousands of elephants and soldiers on his way from afghanistan to the indus from uh, alexander the great and uh, this alexander the great uh, is more of uh, uh, her dream he is in her dream uh, because it is said that he climbed up uh, up and up on the swet mountains and uh, so that he could catch hold of the uh, star of jupiter as a symbol of his power and uh, uh, malala also nourished this dream like alexander the great to go and touch to reach the highest uh, place in the mountain and to catch hold of the star of jupiter this is also her dream and um, the mountain is fully filled with eucalyptus blossoms and uh, uh, full spring season very plenty of flowers she enjoyed it very happily and uh, her father was not very rich he was poor of course when she was born they lived in a very uh, single room tenement uh, they have to cook and keep everything inside and uh, sleep in the same room and when her brother was born kushal he was named after Uh, a very famous uh, uh, pastan hero uh, kushal khan katak and uh, another brother is atal but when kushal was born the mother herself uh, even women are like that she had a great uh, love for him uh, he was like the apple of her eye and um, uh, her every his every wish was her she was nourishing him like anything and she wanted to buy a new cradle for the boy and malala's father said no no we will use the same uh, cradle that is used for malala used to buy malala so um, the mother uh, had a special uh, love and special corner for the uh, son yes and um, atal also also uh, born next and uh, the father decided we have three children though all had uh, some uh, seven or eight so pa- father was very uh, planning and uh, he he wanted his children want to bring up his children 
wanted to bring up his children in a very uh, planned manner so um, they all uh, used to play and uh, um, they used to enjoy uh, things like that and uh, her mother taught paka she sees about her mother she is very beautiful uh, had a long hair but uh, she was named after some uh, heroine uh, her grandfather was listening to in radio afghanistan and uh, um, th- this is she is a very nice lady uh, usually they used to have arranged marriages in the community but uh, these two fell in love uh, the uh, fa- her father yawudin and tor takai actually he came to study in his uncle's house and uh, next door is uh, thorpakai's uh, aunt's house this is how they had a chance to meet one another and uh, um, actually uh, here she says her father is very black and uh, he had that uh, um, he was worried about his complexion that he is uh, black and things like that but uh, when uh, this beautiful uh, torpakai fell in love with him uh, he became very confident uh, being loved by uh, such a beautiful girl gave him confidence and uh, they wanted to they, they were asking the grandfather to give permission of course ziyavuddin's uh, parents gave permission but uh, torpakai's uh, grandfather he refused uh, and they they are usually Uh, send a uh, barber to communicate the news and ziyawuddin's uh, um, parents sent a barber but they refused to accept it but they waited ziyawuddin uh, said we will wait till uh, there came there there comes a change in um, the grandfather janzir khan and finally uh, he also that is uh, after some 9 months uh, the family agreed for the marriage they got married and here she tells about her uh, mother's family mother's family they are from a, they had all strong men and uh, influential men strong women and influential men and she cites an example of her uh, grandmother one woman in the family that is jansar khan's grandfather's mother she was very uh, uh, very strong and uh, adamant that is her great grandmother um, she uh, this uh, uh, janzir khan was locked up because of a tribal uh, feud or a, uh, fight with another family when he was only 9 years old and to get him released the grandmother great grandmother walked nearly 40 miles uh, 40 miles alone over the mountain to appeal to a very powerful cousin and finally uh, she has achieved what she went for uh, the release of the uh, grand uh, her son jansar khan and that is the grandfather of malalai mother's mother's father and um, this jiyawuddin uh, 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 not only giving uh, rights uh, equal right to the daughter but also to his wife that is the great thing about him uh, he always uh, treated her as a genuine friend and uh, uh, he always used to share all the problems of the family uh, usually uh, in the com- in their community it is considered to be a sign of weakness to share your problems with the wife but he did it he even asks his wife as a, what to do how to settle this so uh, malala says i was very happy to see my parents uh, happy and uh, uh, laughing a lot people uh, would always say that there is a sweet family where the mother is given uh, equal rights uh, treated as a genuine friend by the father and uh, she was also very pious and uh, she prays uh, five times a day she never used to do dancing but malala says i like to dancing i used to hide myself uh, and da- do dancing and uh, but they all believed in buying this is what happens buying tinsels pretty things embroidered uh, clothes and golden necklaces and bangles but malala says i was not interested in all that i never used to buy all that so she says i got bored going to the uh, bazaar uh, i always like to dance but she was uh, uh, she loved dancing behind glo- closed doors with her school friends 
and then uh, she talks about the uh, father father is always with literary societies and also as i said how to save the environment how to save the valley and he was always uh, bothered about uh, uh, protecting the nature and the environment uh, took interest in that and worked for that they they talked about that uh, so and guess he used to come that he was running of course a school earlier they were very poor but he was running a school uh, to educate the children all the tribes it's not to earn money but to educate all the children especially the female children malala was going to that school of course and they belong to the yuzavsai uh, tribes and um, here he says uh, this is there is a story about this community also the tribal community she says that uh, in the 16th uh, century that is this, these people came from uh, kandahar uh, and are one of the few biggest pashtun tribes biggest tribal group spread across pakistan and afghanistan and this uh, the ancestors they came in the 16th century pashtuns came in the 16th century from kabul and uh, they had uh, they have help she tells a story about the uh, yusuf zai um, that is they helped the timurid emperor uh, back to throne so they were all uh, supporting him like anything they were in all lead posts yusuf uh, yusuf zai Uh, people they were all uh, in lead posts in the court and the army and at that time what happened somebody poisoned the mind of that king of course these people helped the king to get back his throne timurid king and finally the emperor and finally what happened somebody uh, said the yusuf uh, yusuf sai are becoming very powerful more powerful than the king so just to uh, bring them down you know, the the uh, uh, the king uh, uh, held a banquet and uh, set all this that uh, uh, he gave a party uh, eat uh, uh, dinner party to all the men and around 1600 sorry around 600 leaders uh, chiefs were massacred and only two men escaped they fled to peshawar along with the tribesmen and uh, they came to this uh, swat valley they came to swat Uh, with their support so they could they, they thought that they could return to afghanistan but uh, they were so captivated by the beauty uh, of the swat valley uh, instead they decided to stay there and uh, uh, forced the other tribes out so this is how uh, the family was there and uh, here she talks about uh, is a boy they all had land among the male members of the tribe and they had a particular system called a wesh w e s h wesh uh, system under which every 5 or 10 years you know, all the families who, uh, among the village they redistribute the land so that um, good and bad lands will be circulated um, Uh, this is what the, they had this arrange the chance to work on both good and bad so the wesh uh, system was followed by them and uh, they had to pay rent um, usually in the form of a share of a crop share their crop and um, the khans uh, form a military militia and uh, they provided uh, armed men for every small plot of land so each khan kept hundreds of uh, armed <laughs> hundreds of uh, armed men both for feuds and to raid and loot their other villages so this is how they maintained their uh, ruling system this was the ruling system and here she talks about in particular about the two uh, great rulers that is uh, uh, miangul uh, abdul wadud uh, of course uh, they all affectionately called him as uh, Uh, Baksha and this uh, Baksha is uh, was completely illiterate, but uh, he was able to bring peace in the valley because the tribes were warring all the time, had problems, uh, fight all the time. But this man, he brought peace in the valley, and um, uh, he wanted people to read. He built the forts, uh, created an army, and um, he uh, that is a uh, 
British people, uh, with the British people, uh, with Br British's uh, consent, he became the value of the state in 1926. Uh, got the permission from them also and he uh, set up the first telephone system and built the first primary school and ended the Vesh system of just circulating the redistributing the land the Vesh system because uh, uh, there will be constant moving between from one village to another he wanted to avoid that and he also uh, gave incentive to build better houses or to plant fruit trees so very great uh, personality in 1949 uh, he just um, after the creation of pakistan he uh, abdicated in favor of his son uh, mlangul uh, hag h a q uh, jagansa uh, the father always said while barsha was uh, barsha shagib brought peace his son uh, hag h a q he brought prosperity to the land. He built, um, um, his, his period is considered to be the golden period in the history and uh, in their history. And he had studied in, a, though father was illiterate, he studied in the British school in Peshawar. And um, he, his own father was illiterate, but he, were, he was very passionate about schools and built many schools as well as uh, hospitals and roads. In 1969, um, and the Wali gave up power and he became part of this, uh, uh, he gave up his power and they became, uh, Swatwali became a part of Pakistan's northwest frontier province, uh, which is a, a few years uh, ago, they changed their name to Khyber Pakhtun Kutwa. And uh, uh, she said, I was born a proud daughter of Pakistan. Um, though all uh, Swatis, uh, he, she says that uh, first I was very proud to be in Swati and then Pastwan before Pakistan. And then uh, she talks about uh, her neighbors uh, like uh, uh, Safina, Babar and Bazit, all her friends with whom she used to play well. And uh, she says, uh, but we are uh, all the time we were expected to do cooking uh, while our brothers and fathers had meetings and talks. For, for my brothers were uh, given full freedom to roam freely about the town, and uh, we, even my mother could not go out to shop without the accompaniment of a male member. Uh, however, even if it was a five year old boy, so this was the tradition that was followed there. And, uh, but uh, here she says her father always used to say that uh, something special about my daughter and he said he also used to say Malala will be free as a bird and uh, she says uh, so I always dreamed of going to the Mount Elam uh, where uh, Alexander the Great uh, tried to touch Jupiter star I too had that dream to go beyond the valley and uh, as, as she watched her brothers and uh, she wondered uh, how free a daughter could ever be. Is it possible? It should become possible. That's what uh, she was dreaming. And as she dreamt, she was able to achieve everything very courageously, uh, facing uh, things very realistically and uh, with her father's support. So uh, she is for female education. Uh, uh, this autobiography once again uh, is only to uh, make people realize uh, education for uh, female girls is very very important they should be treated there should be no gender discrimination in the society only uh, such society can prosper well thank you thank you one another.